All right, welcome back everyone. Um, in today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can create 3D text in Maya. Let's take a look. All right, so here we are inside of Maya. And to create 3D text, we're going to need the type tool. You can get to your type tool from the poly modeling shelf. It's right here, it's the icon T, or from the create tab over here. So if you click on that, um, it's going to give you some sample text and it'll open up your attribute editor. If it doesn't, you'll need to open that up. And to make changes to our text, we're gonna locate this type one tab over here and we'll have some settings we can change. Uh, before we start though, if you take a look at my text, you can see that because it's selected, I have this green selection highlighting and that can make it a little bit difficult to preview our changes, especially when we're working with something like this. So what I like to do is um, I'll disable that every now and then. So to do that, we're going to select the text, go to show. Down here, we have selection highlighting, and I'll just disable that. All right. And then just remember to enable that back on um, once you're done working without it. All right. Over here on the right in this box, we can change what the text says. So you'll want to put in whatever you like. I'm going to backspace this away and then uh, put in, uh, sorry, let's go with digital Dreambox tutorials. There we go. And then I'm actually going to move tutorials to the next line. And then we'll go through um, what some of the options over here are. So this first drop down will be your different fonts. So uh, the type tool will try and pull the different fonts that you have installed on your computer. Some fonts will uh, work better than others um, as a 3D mesh. Um, so keep that in mind as you're choosing a font, right? So I'm just going to go through here. Um, in here, so in this box, you can also type in what you're looking for. So I know I have Arial on there. So I'm going to go with Arial for this demonstration. There we go. And then in the second box will be your styles. So if I click right this right now, it's not showing any styles. And so there's a bit of a bug where it doesn't um, pull the different styles of the fonts um, reliably. So another method you can try is that if you know the styles of that font, you can try and type it in. So I know Arial has italic, for example. So I'm going to go with italic. And there we go. So now we have an italic font. Or it also has a bold italic. And I find this is just a little more reliable to get the styles. Um, but for this demo, I'm going to go with bold. There we go. The third dropdown will be the language systems. So if you want to filter the font selections for that particular language, uh, you can. Um, and if you have it installed, right? Um, so I'll leave that at any. Moving down, we have our text tab. And we actually have a bunch of tabs. I'm not going to go through everything here. The tutorial will be a little bit long. Um, animation kind of needs its own tutorial, but I'll cover uh, most of the other ones, especially geometry, because this is where we'll make most of the changes to the look of the font, um, the text, I should say. And then, so moving down, we have alignment as one of these options. So if I zoom out a little bit and bring in my move tool, uh, by the way, I'm still in this box, so I'll just need to select my font over here um, so that I'm not making changes to the text. But we have alignment, so we have left justified, we have centered, and we have right. I'm going to leave it at centered, right? Below it, we have font size, so this is pretty straightforward. We can increase or decrease the size of the font. As you decrease it to a low value, you'll notice that the font depth starts looking like it's a little bit... Um, basically deeper here, right? But that distance isn't changing. So if I go into the top view for a second and increase or decrease this, you can see that that distance remains the same. So I'm just going to go back to here. I'll leave it at 10, but later on, if we want to change that, we can change it in the geometry section. So I'll show you that later. Uh, all right, so now moving down, we have tracking and kerning scale. Uh, both of these will adjust the distance of the letters horizontally. Um, the difference is the type tool considers uh, tracking to adjust the distance based on a bounding box. And the kerning scale will adjust it based on the shape of the letter. But I find these work very similar, except that um, I can squish these a little bit easier with the kerning scale. Normally, though, in typography or graphic design, kerning refers to um, adjusting the space of the letter horizontally to another letter. So keep that in mind. Um, but we can kind of make up for that later on when we visit the type manipulator in a second. 
All right. So leading scale. So leading scale is going to adjust the distance of the line. So for now, I'm going to move this down. And then if I increase this or decrease that, it'll adjust that um, uniformly for across all the lines. Really good for if you want to make um, the text more readable or if you just want to change the presentation of a phrase. Right. All right. So we have this or several lines, I should say. And then we have a space width scale next, which will adjust the distance of the words on a line, right, um, uniformly. So if I increase this or decrease it, it's adjusting that distance. All right, let's do this. And I'm going to move this back down. And then uh, the type tool manipulator, uh, sorry, the type manipulator, if we enable that, we can change basically the positioning of letters, words, or lines. So right now it's set actually to uh, characters or letters, right? So if I double click this, you'll see it's set on character. And then, um, let me, I don't want to pin that, just move it over here for now. And then over here, we can move it up and down. I'm just going to undo that. When we undo that, right, Control Z to undo, uh, you'll notice that that bounding box kind of stays up a little bit. So I just want to reselect that letter to move it over here. And then uh, if I pick, say, a letter over here, I can position that or sorry, move that a little bit. So it kind of makes up for that difference in kerning um, that you would normally get from like um, Adobe Illustrator, for example. Right, just going to undo that. And then we can adjust the scale as well. So if I go into like here, I can play with the scale if I want, or I can go this way. Um, and then you can play around with this. You can uh, change it to word so that then you can readjust the word, adjust the word, I should say, or you can do the entire line if you want. So something like that or like that. So I'm just going to undo that. All right. And now just change this back to character and close this up. So that's the type manipulator. All right, moving across, uh, let's take a quick look at generator. Um, I find I don't use this that often. I don't see it being used that often, so I don't want to spend too much time on here. Uh, I want to keep this tutorial fairly short, right? But generator will generate a sequence of letters, characters, numbers, and it will work with uh, the time slider. So let's go into my general workspace for a second. And so we'll show you frame number. So frame number is going to give me four characters. So we have uh, four numbers here and we can increase or decrease that. And then it'll change every one um, frame. So over here, if I drag this, it's going to change. And if I want to change it, say every five frames, I can put five here and it won't update until the fifth frame where it'll show me uh, frame five. And then once I go to 10, it'll show me 10. So just like that. Um, all right, so let me just change this back to one, maybe change this back to four. Um, and I'll show you, you know, one more, maybe uh, let's go with scene time. This is the duration in seconds. So as we move this, you'll see this update. And if I change it to something where the math is a little bit easier, so maybe 30 frames per second, right? As I move this here, this slider, you can see that by the time I get to that 30th frame, which is down here, we get one second. And as I get to that 60th frame, we get two seconds. And you can change some of these um, settings over here if you like, like the decimal places, etc. Um, I'm just gonna leave this back the way it was. And then um, down here, we also have um, um, some other ones you can play with if you like. So moving across, we have geometry. Actually, before we get to geometry, let me turn this off. There we go. Let's go back to the other workspace as well so we can see this a bit better. And Maya has crashed. That's new. Let me restart Maya and we will get started. Okay. All right. So I restarted Maya. I said that's new, but Maya does have a history of crashing, you know, at the worst times. However, um, that was the first time I crashed while I was using the type tool. Okay. So now uh, we're back here. Uh, let's go back to, uh, let's go to the geometry tab. And then over here we have curve resolution. So if I enable wireframe unshaded, curve resolution will increase or decrease the resolution in the curved areas here. So if I, let's go over here. So we have a curve resolution of four. If I decrease that, we have a much lower poly looking font. And if I increase that, you can see it's looking much rounder in these sections here. So if I turn that off, 
it's much rounder. I'll leave that at four. Uh, some of the settings below here um, will try and filter the vertices um, while still retaining the shape of your font. So we'll try and remove vertices that aren't um, maintaining the structure or look of the letters. Um, down here, we can delete the caps. So if I click on this, right, it'll remove basically those caps over there. Uh, and then you can also create curves from your type if you want. Down here, we have deformable type. So deformable type, if I enable this, let me turn on wireframe unshaded so you can see it, right? So at the front here, we have, um, you know, some n-gons on this section, but over here, you know, we have like a quad. But if I enable this, it's going to basically triangulate some of those sections. And this is useful for um, if you have trouble rendering. I know like uh, maybe some older versions of Maya or older versions of Arnold, um, some people have had said they had issues rendering, right? And they found they could fix this by just checking this. Um, or if you're planning to take your text into a sculpting program, you'll want to probably check this before you take it into something like ZBrush to get rid of those end gods, right? And then we have some settings down here to uh, redistribute some of the triangulation, how you like it. So I'm just going to uncheck that and close that up. And let's move down. And then we have extrusion. So for extrusion, this is where we can adjust the depth of our font. So if I go into here, uh, let me just uh, click that off for a second so you can see it. Um, I can play with the distance, right? So I can increase or decrease that. Um, the offset works with these profiles. So let me just bring this back for a second. We can maybe increase some of these divisions and we can select one of these profiles. So I'll go with this one for now. And then if I increase this offset, you can see that we can change the look of our font, right? So just like that. And we can play around with it maybe change to one of these ones. And you can see that we can change the look of it quite easily. Uh, this extrude, extrude distance is a little bit intense, but there we go. Um, something to keep in mind is when you're playing with the extrude offset, as well as down here, once we get to bevel offset, um, you can encounter a little bit of a clipping now and then, depending on um, the letters and which fonts you're using. So watch out for using extreme values there. But I'm just going to maybe go back. Maybe I'll change this to one for the extrusion. And I'm going to reset this. So if you want to reset this, click on this one here, and that will go back to that flat profile. And if you want to open up the curve editor in a different window, you can just click this one here. All right, let's move down to bevel. So down here, we can enable bevel with this checkbox. And if I turn off wireframe on shaded, you can see this a bit better. And now we have this kind of nice bevel at the front. It also bevels the back section as well. And then we can play with some of these values. So for example, we can play with the bevel division, or we can play with the bevel offset. And we can use these profiles as well um, if we want. There's a stair stepping one here just to create, you know, a different look for the font. Actually, that looks kind of nice. Um, probably doesn't need all those bevel divisions though. And then, um, yeah, so play around with it. I'm going to maybe go back to this one and maybe reduce these divisions. I don't need it. I'll go with something like that. Maybe play with this offset a little bit. Let's turn off wireframe unshaded. Let's take a look here. Looks kind of nice, but I'll just decrease this a little bit. All right, looks pretty good. And maybe I'll play with the distance a little bit over here. All right, uh, let me close this up. Uh, going across, we have texturing. And this is the last set, uh, part I want to cover. So over here, um, right now it's using a type blend shader. If I open up the hyper shade, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Here it is over here. Um, and we can assign it some uh, shaders to the some sections of these letters. So if we click on this one over here, it's going to assign a shader to the cap, which is the front section, the beveled section, if you have a bevel, and then the extrusion. So let's uh, take a look. So I'm gonna click on this, and right away it's assigned it. So uh, it really saves you some time if you want to quickly add some colors to those sections, right? And then we can go in and change those colors if we like. So I can go into here, you know, maybe go into the material attributes. So I'm just holding down the right mouse button, material attributes. And then we can go into maybe the cap shader. Oh, I'm, I'm on the cap shader, perfect. And then over here, uh, we can just, you know, change it to one of these colors if we want, right? So I'll just leave it at white. 
So yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to cover with the type tool just to get you started. Um, I plan to make maybe some future tutorials, so this will act as a, a resource or a quick start for just getting to know the type tool. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, today's tutorial and um, that's it for this one. We will see you in the next. Have a great day, everyone.